Hello and welcome to Haunted Theme Parks. As of late, my channel has become quite cryptid focused, and while I know you love that topic, and I love talking about it, I do try to bring other things to the table as well. If I do say so myself, I came across quite an interesting topic this week, and one that isn't talked about too often. While you frequently see things about creepy or abandoned parks, there isn't too much focus on actual hauntings. I will call this part one, since I know I won't be able to cover all of the parks that I want to. Before continuing, I also wanted to mention that in last week's video, I forgot to say that a viewer named Steven on the Water had also suggested the topic of Jeff the Talking Mongoose. When I saw that username, I could remember him suggesting it a while ago. Just so you were aware, he didn't ask for me to make this correction, and he was just happy the video was made about the topic. However, in my due diligence, I try to give you all credit for the things you suggest. So thank you, Steven on the Water. So without dragging this out any longer, let's pull back the curtain of these locations set up with family fun in mind and see what beings roam about in the shadows. We are starting off with visiting the Dream World Amusement Park, which is located in Coomera, Queensland, Australia. This park was constructed in 1974 by a man named John Longhurst, with the help of engineers he hired that also worked on Disney World. It officially was open to the public on December 15th in 1981. Through the years, the park has had many rides for all ages, and it also has welcomed many characters from pop culture, including The Simpsons, Spongebob, and Kung Fu Panda. Not to mention that the park was also home to the house where the Australian version of Big Brother was filmed. However, behind the smiling faces of the park's mascots, Kenny Koala and Belinda Brown, there lies a fairly frightening tale. In a section of the park, known as Town of Gold Rush, there is a roller coaster named the Buzzsaw. While many of us are familiar with oddly named rides, this one actually was built around the very real story of a man named Jack Dark. In 1878, the real town of Gold Rush was built around the industry of gold mining. This didn't last long since by 1887, there wasn't any gold to be found, and the town had to quickly pivot their plans to stay afloat. They did this by turning into a lumber yard, but not everyone was willing to give up mining. Now the story changes here, but most claim that on a clear moonlit night on September 16th in 1897, a British born miller named Jack Dark came across a group of disgruntled men who were attempting to burn down the sawmills. Jack got into an argument with these men and it quickly became heated. During this event, Jack apparently stumbled into the buzz saw and it didn't end well. Some say Jack was the one wanting to cause the fires, while others claim that the whole true events of the story were covered up by the town. All of this story is on record as a real event, so it makes it especially odd that Dream World would make a ride that embraced such a dark story. Since that time, Dream World has had many issues with their rides, which have sadly resulted in tragedy and you can hardly look up one article about the park without being inundated with stories of accidents and problems. Is this a curse from Jack? Who knows? It could very easily be poor management. What is known is that visitors that have been to the park on a clear dark night have frequently seen the apparition of a man matching Jack Dark's description wearing 1800s clothing. He will be seen just standing there in various parts of the park. And just as quickly as he's seen, he vanishes. Not to mention that a lot of guests nearing the buzzsaw ride claim to find weird cold spots in random areas. One of the other claims is that a shadow person, believed to be Jack, has been seen roaming about the town of Gold Rush attraction. Probably one of the eeriest sightings is that some patrons have found that the ghost of Jack has decided to take the seat beside them as they embark on their ride. I could only imagine looking over and seeing a ghost sitting beside me. Heading back to the United States, we're going to look at Kings Island, which is located in Mason, Ohio. Construction started on this park on June 15th in 1970 and was completed in an impressive two-year period. The park was built to replace the Coney Island that is located in Cincinnati due to concerns with flooding. Although Coney Island still exists today, but is now oddly only focused on being a water park. 
Now this park has quite an interesting history, and not in the way that I normally mention in my Crypto by State series. It is said that it was built near the abandoned King's Powder Company, which produced ammunition and during its history suffered a few explosions. These events are said to have claimed the lives of anywhere between 30 and 100 employees. Those brave enough to enter the facilities claim to still hear footsteps of those former workers. If that wasn't bad enough, Kings Island was constructed very closely to the Union Cemetery, which many forgot existed due to it becoming overgrown and falling into disrepair prior to the 1970s. As a note, some call this the Dog Street Cemetery, but its official name is the Union Cemetery. Amongst all the famous attractions at the park, along with its wildly popular Halloween haunt, formerly called Fear Fest, held from September through October, there are also quite a few ghostly visitors as well. One of which tends to be seen around the park's very first ride, known as The Racer. Aptly named, the ghost that resides here is called The Racer Boy. Apparently many guests, guards, and workers have seen the ghostly image of a boy who was around 10 years old and dressed in a white 1950s style suit, normally around the racer. When most people see him, he is there for only a second and then disappears. Some have claimed to see him on security cameras, but when they go to look for him, he is gone. Not to mention that he has been known to make motion sensor lights turn on. There is a common story where he is the ghost of a child who suffered an accident on the ride when it was at Coney Island and named the Shooting Star. However, some have investigated this claim and no such accident occurred, at least to a 10-year-old boy. A similar story did happen to an 18-year-old in 1966 prior to the ride being moved to Kings Island. Another ghost that is said to roam about the park but is primarily seen at the Eiffel Tower is known as Tower Johnny. The origins behind this story involve a 17-year-old named John Wesley Harder. He was attending the Kings Island grad night with his friends on May 13, 1983, which happened to be on Friday the 13th. While exact details are unclear, at some point through the night, John climbed the Eiffel Tower attraction via a maintenance stairway and walked out on one of the support structures. The attraction had three elevators for guests to ride on, and investigators assumed that while John was up there, he was hit by a counterweight from an elevator, and then tragically fell 50 to 60 feet down on top of one of the active cars. There are many unresolved mysteries with this accident, but one of the strangest is that the toxicology reports claimed that John had a blood alcohol level of 0.21%. With an amount that high, he should have had trouble standing, let alone climbing a five-foot fence, stairs, and a metal structure. Afterwards, the park secured off any entrances to the structure other than the elevators. Since that time, guests have seen the ghostly figure of Johnny appearing through the park, and more importantly, many report seeing his ghost climbing the Eiffel Tower. Normally, those sightings occur when it is closing time and dark out. On quite a few occasions, guards have been alerted by people reporting that they saw a man in 1980s style clothes climbing around the tower, only to find that no one was there. In some reports from employees, they state that the elevators will sometimes start moving by themselves. The final ghost in the park is known as Missouri Jane, or some call her the Tram Girl. There isn't too much of an origin story here, other than Missouri Jane was the daughter of Stephen and Nancy Galiner, and she passed away from unknown causes on March 10th in 1846, just short of turning six years old. It should be noted that she currently has a tombstone in Union Cemetery. While most call Tower Johnny the most famous ghost, I think Missouri Jane should be, since she has been sighted all over the park. Most all that see her describe her as having blonde hair, blue eyes, and an old-fashioned blue dress. Frequently, sightings come in that only involve guards hearing a disembodied voice of a girl giggling. At nighttime, she has been seen walking around the Union Cemetery, or at other times will just watch people pass by looking through the fence. Guards frequently see this girl outside the park's gate, or at other times playing alone when the park is closed but when they walk up to her, 
she vanishes. At one point, trams operated in the park to shuttle guests from the parking lot, and many of those drivers encountered this ghost. While a few of them saw her actually sitting in one of the empty seats at night, one encounter actually caused an employee to quit that night. As he was finishing his nightly rounds, he suddenly saw a girl in a blue dress run in front of his tram. He quickly hit the brakes, but he was unable to stop in time. The thing was that there wasn't a bump or sound of impact. The driver exited the vehicle, terrified of what he might find, and shockingly, saw nothing. There wasn't any damage to the tram, there wasn't a girl, there was nothing. It was then that he decided that there must be some truth behind the stories he had been hearing. An attraction that Jane seems to really enjoy is called the White Water Canyon. In an area called Tower 2, employees can utilize this location to watch over the people in the water park. Many times, employees claim to hear rocks being thrown at the tower, and when they looked, they would see an invisible force lifting up the stones and hurling them in their direction. Other times, concerned guests would tell security that they had seen a little girl in a blue dress peering at them from the windows in Tower 2. Two paranormal investigators locked themselves into Tower 2 for the night. While trying to contact Jane, they kept hearing footsteps walking up to the door and back down to the gravel again. At one point, they tried to open the door, but found it wouldn't budge. But they were met with the sound of a girl giggling. They both assumed that Jane was holding the door closed. Okay, we are going to move on to one of the biggest theme parks, and that would be, of course, Disneyland Park and also Disney World. Not much backstory is needed here, but Disneyland Park was built on July 16, 1954, and opened on July 17, 1955. In a nutshell, Walt came up with the idea after he realized that there wouldn't be much for tourists to do if they wanted to visit his Walt Disney Studio. To capitalize on the success he found in Anaheim, California, Walt began working in secrecy to purchase land anonymously in Florida in 1964. Only after contracts were binding did he finally reveal himself to be the land buyer and also notify the press that construction had begun on a new Disney park on November 15, 1965. This park would formally open on October 1, 1971. Known as the most happiest place on earth and the most magical place on earth respectively, there are many darker stories revolving around these parks. But we aren't here for that, just ghosts. Quite a few of these stories could simply be urban legend, but who knows for sure. One of the most well-known stories involves a spirit known as Mr. One Way. I'm sure quite a few Disney enthusiasts might be familiar with this one, but it is new to me. At Space Mountain in California, people have frequently reported seeing two forms of the same ghost. They both are called the same thing, but one version is a man with red hair and a very red face who doesn't seem to talk to anyone. On the reverse of this is that of a young boy with red hair who dresses in clothes from the 1970s and apparently will talk to people. The odd thing here is that the child version seems stuck in a period of time where he is unaware of new rides or popular topics. No matter which form is seen, he will enter one of the waiting cars for the ride, but will vanish before the end. The other thing is that he won't enter from where people are supposed to, but rather comes from the exit ramp. I should be showing you a video which claims to show this activity, but again, who knows. While the video shows a wispy see-through form, many sightings say he looks like a normal person. Mr. One Way's origins change as well, since some say he passed away while on the ride, while others claim he originally was a person who worked on the ride when it was being built. I say, if he is real, let him have his fun. The Haunted Mansion has had many ghost stories shared about it, including one of a ghost boy who became tied to the attraction when his mother secretly spread his ashes inside the house. Stories from the staff are mixed as to if people trying to spread ashes actually happens or not. However, there is a story from one employee who thought she saw a co-worker walking up in a tuxedo to replace her for a shift. After waiting a while and no one approached her to do so, she looked around and found no one was there. 
Later that day, she saw the same apparition and even felt it put its hand on her shoulder. But when she turned around, she found she was alone. Probably the most famous story is about Walt Disney. And <laughs> no, not about him being frozen. Apparently, while alive, he had an apartment above the firehouse on Main Street where he would stay from time to time. Whenever he visited, a light was turned on in the window so employees knew he was there. After he passed away, the light was kept off. According to the story, a worker walked by and saw the light on, so she went upstairs and turned it off. When she made it to the street, she looked up and saw the light was on again. So she went back and turned it off. This happened a few times until she finally unplugged it, and yet again, she saw the light was on. Some say at this point, she heard a voice say, I'm still here, but I can't find too much record on that. Since that moment, the light has remained on. So as I end this, I was curious, what are your thoughts about these stories? Are they real, or just interesting urban legends? Also, I want to make a part two, but I'll let you decide if you like this or not. I found at least eight more parks with activity, but it is up to you. If you haven't yet done so, do please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Also, it would be greatly appreciated if you share my videos with someone you know who may be interested in this type of genre. With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!